Hello, hello everybody. This is Tiptop MTG here today with another Magic the Gathering video. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you my opinion on what are the top 10 most you know impactful cards for Historic from Amonkhet Remastered. So, Amonkhet Remastered came out yesterday and as such, we don't know what the meta is going to look like. Is it going to be combo centric? Is it going to be, you know, control heavy, rush heavy? What is it going to really look like? Uh, and the only thing we really have to go off is the cards that are being added and what the current meta currently looks like. And so what I've done is I've looked through every single um, uh, Alma Carey Mastered card, and these are my opinion as the, of the top 10 in no particular order mo most impactful cards. So just because it's the first one I talk about doesn't mean that I think it'll be less impactful than the 10th one I talk about. Um, generally, these are just the cards that I think have the highest chance of being part of a meta deck. Um, you know... It's impossible to tell. I mean, I, I guess it's not impossible. Someone has to come up with the meta and in, in the deck in the meta, but it is going to be very difficult to see what the meta is at this point. But if I were to guess, it would be around these 10 cards. And so why don't we jump right into this? Starting off, we've Hazaret the Fervent. It's a 4-cost red legendary creature god, 5-4 with indestructible and haste, and it can't attack or block unless you have one or fewer cards in your hand. But you can pay 3, uh, one of it being red, and discard a card to deal 2 damage to each opponent. Okay. So, red decks, what they're generally going to want to do is they're going to want to play a lot, at least the ones in Historic, want to play their entire hand onto the battlefield and just swing and win. And a 4-drop will generally be the last thing out of your hand in that kind of deck. And when that happens, you're getting to swing with a 5-4 five, five, indestructible haster, and generally, you will always have an empty hand, and that's normally a downside for red. But Hazaret kind of turns it into an upside. On top of that, Hazaret in the past has been problematic in the standard meta in the fact that it's just been very powerful in mono-red rush decks because, yes, you're going to run your hand out, and if your opponent does happen to get enough defenses, you might be able to just do that that last little bit of damage with the discard ability. Um, I think the haste part of it is utterly terrifying in the fact that you could be like, okay, I'm going to survive with five life, I'll be able to board wipe, and then poof, Hazard hits the field and you're dead. Um, it is also probably going to be a great target to Embercleave. You know, now you have a 6-5 double striking trampler, indestructible with haste. Uh, yeah, that's pretty insane, although, you know, it might not be the best choice because then it sometimes can't attack or block, but uh, I think generally this is going to do well because it's exactly what Red is already doing. And on top of that, Burn is also kind of seeing a place in Historic, and I wouldn't be surprised if Hazaret fit into that because it lets you kind of turn every spell, every card, whether it's a land or anything, into a Burn spell. So, uh, yeah, I think this will definitely see a place in the meta. Next, we have Ronus. So this is a 3-cost green legendary creature god, 5-5, five, five, with a death touch and indestructible. So basically, anything that swings at you is going to die. Or, or yeah, that swings at the person who has Ronus is going to die. Uh, but it can't attack or block unless you control another creature with power 4 or greater. Okay. Hazaret says, hey, you know, for having this negative effect, I will be allowed to attack or block. Ronus is saying, hey, for having already a bunch of big creatures, I'll be another big creature, which you could say Hazaret is better for that. It turns a downside into an upside, but I would say that being able to just, you know, not need the downside to have a 5-5 five, five indestructible death toucher is insane. I mean, with Pelt Collector, I would not be surprised if turn 3 or Four, you end up with a 5-5 five, five Death Toucher, but that's not even that 5-5 cra five, five Death Toucher indestructible. Uh, that's not that crazy anymore. But then it also has the ability to give things plus 2, plus 0, oh, and trample, which is the big part there. Uh, I think that this will most of the time come down as a 5-5 five, five Death Touch indestructible for 3. I think it will improve the, you know, the quality and the power of mono green decks and maybe even gruel decks i just think that this card is really good it stops combat it is a you know a creature that can block anything and kill it how many creatures can really say that um there aren't that many death touch indestructibles um and yeah just five five for three is already pretty good next we have Sphinx's Revelation is X, white, and a blue, and two blue, sorry, for an instant, you gain X life and draw X cards. Now, uh, this one may not be as, you know, guaranteed as the other ones, but I think that with the amount of Bant Ramp uh, in the game right now, um, this will definitely see a place in that. Think about it. If you're trying to get up to a ton of mana, you know, you can just draw a bunch of cards, and then, I don't know, it just... Bant Ramp kind of is missing that explosion, the ability to just refill their hand. And yes, they have Hydroid Crisis. That is kind of their explosion, but I think this is a better 
maybe not better hydrid crisis but one that could definitely fit into the deck or at least the sideboard of a bant ramp deck i don't know if it's a four of but the fact that it's instant speed is also really awesome your opponent can swing you know you hold up more mana ho hold up looking like you're like maybe gonna settle the wreckage they only attack with a barely enough to kill you when they could have actually killed you if they swung out and then you sphinx is revelation gain some life draw some cards get some answers uh, and it just seems like a really awesome card. So I think this card definitely uh, could have a home in the meta. Now, by the way, when I'm talking about all these metas and, and things, I, I do want to make it clear that the historic meta is changing very frequently. Last month, we have, so we had a course at 2021. The following month, we had Jumpstart. That switched up the meta a ton. Amakai um, Remastered came out this month. That's going to switch up the meta a lot. Zendikar Rising. Alright, so those were just some of my thoughts on Sphinx's Revelation, let's move on. Next we have the Scarab God. It's a 5 cost blue and black legendary creature god, 5-5, five, five, and it says at the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses X life, and you scry X, where X is the number of zombies you control. Then you can pay for an exile target creature card from a graveyard, create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a 4-4, four, four, and whenever it dies, return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. So... Essentially, it's going to keep coming back, and it's going to keep uh, reanimating things from graveyards. Um, generally, this is a really powerful card, and I expect it to fit into a lot of different control decks in a lot of different styles. Um, it just is a hard threat to deal with. You do have to exile it, which there is a little bit more of in standard, you know, Ugin's and um, Vanishing Lights, or not standard, historic, um, Settle the Wreckage, all that, but... Um, it is just overall a very value-oriented card. You're gaining, you're killing your opponents while scrying, while getting copies of creatures from graveyards, while exiling your opponent's graveyard. I mean, you can basically pay for remove target Uro from the game, uh, and you know you get uh, as well pay for remove target Uro from the game, draw a card, gain three life, put a land down. Like this is an amazing card, especially for the meta currently. So I think it's almost a guarantee that it'll end up there. Next we have Approach of the Second Sun. So this is a 7 cost white sorcery and it says if this spell was cast from your hand and you've cast another spell named Approach of the Second Sun this game, you win the game. Otherwise, put Approach of the Second Sun into its owner's library, 7th from the top, and you gain 7 life. So the idea is you play this and then 7 turns later you are going to win the game. Uh, by casting it again. Now, this can work in other ways. You could have two of these in your hand, cast one one turn, cast one the next. Um, generally, this is a in a control deck. You just run this and control, uh, and that's about it. You know, you'll run your Teferis and your, you know, anything. Um, your your Teferis and your counter spells and your board wipes, and you just basically stall, stall, stall until you pull this card and have seven mana. Then you cast this card, stall, 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 win the game. Uh, it's kind of just an alternate win con for control, which I actually, well, a lot of people are disappointed, and I think I am too, because it'll increase the amount of these decks. At least these decks have a different win con now. I'd rather them just end the game quickly than, you know, I guess this isn't that quickly, but at least it's just I win the game, poof, I don't need to deal, like, one damage to you at a time. Uh, I just think that's better. So, yeah, I think that this is going to be a impactful card, just because it always, like, in standard, it was impactful, and I just... Uh, based on how controlly the meta can kind of be, I expect it to be impactful. Although, because of the amount of rush and, you know, uh, quick decks, maybe this won't see as much play as I'm expecting. Next, we have God Pharaoh's Gift, and this includes Gate to the Afterlife, which is a card that lets you tutor this out by having cards in your graveyard. Uh, so this is a 7-cost artifact. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may exile a creature card from your graveyard. If you do, create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's a 4-4 black zombie. It gains haste until end of turn. So, at the beginning of combat on your turn, make a 4-4 version of anything in anyone's graveyard and exile it from their graveyard, or not in anyone's graveyard, in your graveyard and exile it. So this goes in a self-mill deck. You self-mill a bunch of big things, Ulamog, things with awesome abilities, because power and toughness doesn't matter. So things like Ulamog, anything that just has a really awesome ability, or maybe even things that are like 1-1 one -one double strikers, are now 4-4 four -four double strikers, stuff like that. Um, and the card that, so this is a 7 cost, so you're like, oh, that's hard to get out, but there's a card called Gate to the After life which basically says if you have six creatures in your graveyard search your hand library or graveyard for a card named god pharaoh's gift and put it onto the battlefield so you don't even have to worry about milling this so just it is a very powerful card that i expect to see in a lot of different decks next we have 
Hollow One. So this is a 5 cost artifact creature golem 4-4, but you're never going to pay 5. It says this spell costs 2 less to cast for each card you've cycled or discarded this turn, and it has cycling 2. So essentially, if you can cycle 3 things on one turn, you get a free 4-4. And Boros, you know, um, cycling really hasn't been a huge thing, and actually, um, looking at Amaket, it's mostly in Demir, which doesn't even share colors, so I expect um, cycling in Historic to be 3 color, maybe adding black, maybe adding blue, probably blue, um, and it's going to use Hollow One as another way to win the game, and just a way to stall until they can get to their Solar Flare, so yeah, I think that this will most likely see play, I think it is one of my least likely options, it just, it is so much value that I find it hard uh, to see, and if if cycling does come around to be a meta deck, this will be in it. Next we have Hour of Promise. This is a 5 cost green sorcery. Search your library for up to 2 land cards, put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. Then if you control 3 or more deserts, create 2 2 2 black zombie creature tokens. Now. There is something kind of not ironic, but uh, not ironic, but just, you know, it's creating 2-2 two, two black zombie creature tokens. But in Historic, what this will almost 100% of the time get is uh, Field of the Dead. This card is special and very powerful because it says any up to two land cards. Not basic lands, not lands that colored land, I don't know, not forest um, it is just any land, and so what that means is that you can go get the most broken cards in your deck, and so I see this replacing things like Golos in decks uh, that don't rely on his activated ability. Some decks just run Golos as a, you know, 5 cost, go get Field of the Dead. This is 5 cost, go get 2 Field of the Deads, and that bottom part really isn't relevant, but it's kind of funny that it creates 2-2 two, two Black Zombie Creature Tokens, because that's what's going to happen with it. Now, I expect this card to most likely get banned for one simple reason. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it is banned in Pioneer, um, or at least something similar to it is banned in Pioneer, because of the whole Field of the Dead thing. It is just too powerful, um, and it will most likely get banned. If it's going to get banned in Pioneer, which I am double-checking that right now, it is sorry it was not banned in pioneer um something was banned in pioneer maybe fields of the dead was banned in pioneer for using this card but i just know that this was part of the problem for field of the dead in pioneer um uh, at least it's problematic. I don't know if anything actually ended up getting banned from it. I just know that I've heard from many people that, hey, yeah, Pioneer's banned. It's banned in Pioneer. So I expect people of the dead to get re-banned or this card to get banned. So don't expect that to stay around for very long. If Pioneer, or sorry, if Field of the Dead plus this card is too powerful for Pioneer, it's too powerful for Historic. Next, we have Soul Scar Mage. One cost creature, human wizard, one two with prowess. If a source you control would deal non-combat damage to a creature and opponent controls, put that many minus one minus one counters on that creature instead. Uh, this is just amazing. It lets you kind of, you know, store, you know, something's gonna kill you, or I don't know. It just makes your burn spell so much more powerful against creatures. Um, if, you know, there's so many different things that, you know, how, why this is good. Think about it. Let's say you have three two twos and your opponent has a three three. Well, you know, you can swing, but you'll lose a creature. Well, okay. What you could do is hit it with a shock, which normally would just let you swing for one turn because, hey, you know, it has damage marked on it. He doesn't really want to trade, but this lets it become minus one, minus one counters, which means that it is permanently weakened. And now he, that creature will never be a good block for your creatures because this also reduces the power of the creature by dealing damage to it. This card is just so good. It also is a one, two for one, which is exactly what red's going to want. It also has prowess, so if you're running it in like a burn deck, it's going to get really big really fast. So just, wow, very good card. Next we have Thoughtseize. One cost red sorcery. Target player reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it. That player discards that card and you lose life. You st lose two life, sorry. Uh, this is already, you know, discarding is already kind of a big thing in Historic, using like Waste Knot. Uh, but just even in just typical control decks, they will often have, you know, hand disruption and this is just the best hand disruption, one of the best in the entire game. In all of ever, all of the cards ever printed in Magic, this is one of the best. So you can expect that it is probably going to make its way into some decks. I've seen some people say that there's a whole category of thought sees decks, and it just, you know. I am concerned about it because I think there are going to be a lot of turn one thought sees, which kind of sucks. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for that. And that's it. So those are the 10 cards that I think are going to be the most impactful and historic. Do you think that one of these cards really isn't that, you know, powerful? Is it not going to see any play? Or are, is there a card that I missed that is just wildly powerful that you think is going to be in the meta?
Obviously, there are some cards that I think could still end up in the meta, but they just, you know, these were more likely, um, in my opinion. Again, I want to know what you guys think, so leave a comment, like this video, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.